Hey, what's up guys? Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarkucha here. And the last few videos you saw where I broke down the names, the number system, and everything on the casting reels. However, I tried to kind of show you the, the size differences, but I figured it would be better if I actually showed you the reels in comparison to what they actually are within the reels themselves. And so since I've got all of them in the collection, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick for you. Gotta fight, gotta fight. Yeah, yeah. I think I gotta got a lot of stress on my mind. It's a nice day to go. Yeah, I got a line. I'm a caller, the whole team. And that way, too, you can kind of see what the real size difference is because a lot of times you haven't had a chance to get into a tackle shop or to see them and, you know, actually get them in hand. So. It's gonna give you a good idea by doing this, you know, side by side, so you can make the best determination for the style of fishing you wanna do. Obviously, cost is always a major issue when purchasing a new reel, but you gotta to remember too, you know, cheaper ain't always better, but at the same time too, you don't need to go all the way to the big dog if it's something that you're never gonna be put into use. So, that's got to be the major thing you got to ask yourself what kind of fishing you're going to be doing and what are you trying to target now obviously as people always say well i'm only going for this kind of fish and stuff like that so if you're okay with staying with fish like this and you choose this type of reel you got to remember that big fish don't care if they see a bait that you're looking for or that they're looking for and they find it that you're using it and they bite on the hook you gotta ask yourself, are you willing to lose that big old fish because you were not properly prepared for it? That's the real question there. So, a lot of guys are like, you know what, I don't I don't mess with these other big fish and this and that, they stick with light test lines and they're fine with breaking off. They're, they're fine because that's not what they're targeting. You see that, I, I, don't, I don't understand it, I'm sorry, but I think no fish want to bring it in. I don't want that fish to hunt me, but you know, they, they're in there, they're setting their ways and it's that's the fish and they do. But, that's the one that's really gonna haunt you. You hook into something or you want it to be prepared for. So, now granted, it may be that 1% fish that you'll only hook one time. Well, that'll be the one to haunt you. Mm. Well, let me give you a little close up on these rows real quick. See, right here, the way I have them, I have the SX, the MXL, the LX, and the HXW. They're small, medium, large, and heavy. Now, the deal about this is, the way I have them set up, it looks like they're all the same size. However, if I were to get them a little bit closer to each other, let's see if I can get this to work without having to pull them off the rods, you can start to see the size difference in them. There you go. Yeah, now you can kind of see a bit better the size difference between the reels. You got your small, medium, large, and your heavy. And so right there is a big deal. But as you can tell, this is my hand. You know, as, as I start getting on them, they start getting a bigger reel. So the line capacity on these, from this one to this one is about a hundred, about 150 yards. This one's about a 200 yard difference between this and this one jumps up about 300 yards difference if we we're using the same line class. Obviously, everything that I've been showing you and teaching you all is if you mix up the braids, say you go with 60 pound to 100 pound, you can get like 300 yards on this one if you're using the tough line and or the Jerry Brown. But if you're using the generation three, then you're probably only gonna get like 270 yards if you go with straight 100. So this one would do 300 yards of 60 plus 100 yards of 100. This one would do like 500 yards of 60 and like 100 yards of 100. And then this one, we're going straight hunting, we're getting like 700 yards of it. So, this is more of a down, real down and dirty kind of deal. And, you know, like I said, these, these reels, you see the size difference in the spools, I mean, everything. Not only do they increase in size on the, on the um, side housing, they also increase in width, you know. So, again, these are reels that do not come with a worm guide. You have to guide the line in with your own thumb so that's gonna be another thing you got to look at but they all come with a magnetic control if you go with the Raptor or the MC Pass series remember go back to that video where I talk about the MC 
and which rails actually have it. They have them single speed, two speed, in both Generation 1 and Generation 2, the G2s, but, you know, that's where they increase in drag and so forth. So again, this is, there's going to be that question. I mean, when you hook up a fish, are you going to want to land it, or you really don't want to mess with those bigger fish, and you don't care if you break off? So, uh, you know, it's just something I was thinking about right there, and I felt I needed to share this, so it gives you a little bit better idea. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, you start getting into different lines, casting abilities and everything right there. So, well, there you go, guys. Small, medium, large, and heavy. And the funny thing about this reel is, the HXW used to be the, Hu the Huex. They designed it for Wahoo fishing. But as y'all have heard me talk about, sometimes when you label something like, you know, strictly for Wahoo or whatever, then people that are trying to use it for other types of fishing will not go to it because they think it's strictly for Wahoo. Well, for us, we use it for casting for shark and bull reds down here, king fishing, offshore fishing. And that was the thing I wanted to talk about these reels too. You see, I use them for everything I do, whether I'm on the beach, I'm on the jetty, I'm in the bays, I'm on a boat, I'm on a kayak. These are my go-to reels for virtually everything I do if I'm small game targeting and I'm talking seven foot or below. Anytime I'm shooting for anything seven foot or you know eight foot above, then I go to my 80s and my 130. So this just gives you an idea that you know people say, well, it's only good for this or that. No, they are a very, very versatile set of reels and it just, it boils down to you what you're willing to, to fish with. Because like I said, this one can do everything this one can do, and this one can do everything this one can do all the way down to here. The only drawback on this one for me is line capacity. So that's one style of reel that normally if I set out there, I'm pretty much nearby the reel. I, I don't tend to walk away from it unless I have somebody that's there that can watch the reel. Because with the line that I'm fishing with, I don't have a lot of spare room of the spool to leave a whole bunch of line on the reel. Now these three I've actually kayaked out and you know that when you kayak bait you're already setting yourself up to where you're down two, three hundred, four hundred yards of line off the reel. And like I said before this one only holds 400. So this one would be like a second gut drop, this will be a third gut drop and this one would be over the third gut up to the fourth. And you know, if I hook up a seven or eight footer, I'm not worried that I won't be able to turn him. I'm gonna be able to turn him with the line capacity and the tensile strength of my braid that I am using. So, there's a lot of ways to sit there and target your fish. You just gotta pick the right formula that's gonna make you happy and get you where you need to be. So, all right guys, that's a quick down and dirty on the casting reels. The next one I'm gonna be doing is on the 30s, 50s, 80s, and 130s.